Hi friends, it's Carolyn Zook here with Zook Stitch, and today is actually Sunday, October 25th, 2020. If you are new here, thanks for stopping by, and if you're returning, thanks so much uh, for coming back again. This is a YouTube channel about cross-stitch, so let's jump right into it. I normally upload on Saturdays, as many of you know, but I was just really busy yesterday with work stuff, um, so here I am today. Um, it is we had, I think it frosted last night, I'm not entirely sure, um, but we are in a frost warning. So I went out and covered up all my plants um, that I bought for putting the house on the market. And when I got up this morning, it's quite windy here as well. And when I got up this morning, the um, sheets had blown off <laughs> the plant. So I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. But I do know that I love this weather so much. The feels like temperature is about 33, I think it said. The actual temperature is around 40. Um, I've had my fireplace going, um, my, a blanket on my lap. I have a new blanket, which I just got off of Amazon there for working upstairs, so I'm excited about that. Um, my fall candle's burning. It's just been really cozy. Simon's been on my lap most of today while I've been grading. I was grading earlier this morning, grading papers. So, that's where we're at. I'm so happy. Uh, fall is officially here and it's definitely chilly and I love it. Okay, so first up, I have, I have a question for you and then I have a couple questions that I wanted to answer from you. So my first question is regarding Q-snaps. So I like using Q-snaps, um, but here's something that I've noticed. And this is happening on a few of them, not all of them. And I want your feedback. So this is my 11 by 11 Q-snap, but it's very loose. Well, of course, it's not doing it, but it's already coming out. Normally, I can't even hold it up, right? Of course, for the video, it didn't fall apart. But usually, as soon as I hold it like this, it, this will fall out um, like that. So is this... When people, I heard that people put these in the dishwasher. Is that what they mean? The clamps fit fine, but when the clamps are on it, it doesn't hold it together. I mean, the clamps will hold the, there's cat hair all over this. <laughs> the clamps will hold the fabric in just fine. I don't have an issue with the tension or anything. I have an issue with the frame itself being super loose and falling apart. And I'm wondering, because I heard that you can put these in the top rack of your dishwasher um, I thought that was just for the clamps, if the clamps become loose, but can't, I haven't tried it yet, but can you do that for this? Has anybody had this happen to them um, where it's just super, of course, again, it's not doing it, <laughs> where it's super loose? So I just want to know if you've had that, what you do about it. Um, my main concern with it is, one, it's annoying, right? Be but also, can you see that gap right there? So I have to make sure, you know, and when even when I push it, it comes out a little bit. Um, my concern is that the fabric gets pinched in there, and it does happen. And I, you know, I'm able, I'm able to make it work. It just takes a little more finagling, and you just have to be really careful because I don't want the fabric to be pinched down where that join is. That's my main concern, and also it's just annoying that every time I pick it up, I have to adjust it. And as I'm putting the fabric in on this, I have to keep moving it together so that I can make sure that the joints are together because there have been times when I've put the fabric on and then realized that the join is separated. So let me know um, what you do about that. If you've had that issue, I could just put it in the dishwasher. I know it won't hurt it and just try it, but I was just curious if any of you had that issue and what you do. So thank you in advance for your help on that. So one question, so I haven't gotten through all the questions or all the comments from the last video. I'm most of the way through, but I know I still have some to uh, catch up on. So if you asked a question and I'm not answering it this time, I apologize. I will definitely answer it next time. Uh, but Judy, Judy, I think you actually asked this on, um, on one of our Facebook groups. And I did talk about it a little bit in last week's video, um, and you said, oh, never mind, I watched the video. But I thought I would answer it again, just very directly in case others have the same question. So Judy asked me, how do I do my 10 hour rotation? So last week I was talking about my WIPGO, 
um, and that I do 10 hour rotations. That's my own goal that I set for myself for my whip go pieces. She asked, do you just do a little bit and then put it away and then pull it back out later in the month? Or how do you do your 10 hour rotations? For me, I will do 10 hours over the period of three or four days and then kind of in a row without working on other projects usually. And then I'll put it away for the month or until the number gets called. Or if I have a rotation, and I'll talk about this a little bit later today actually, if I have a rotation that I'm just working on say, oh, I want to get this done so I'm going to do 10 hours every month till it's done, I'll do all 10 hours at once just that's what works for me. Um, and to do 10 hours, I might be able to do it in three evenings worth of stitching if I um, kind of push myself a little bit. That's what, three hours a night, four hours one night. Yeah, I could do it in um, three evenings if I have the time. Um, but yeah, I enjoy doing it all at once uh, and then putting it away. It just, for me, that's efficient. And it takes me a little while to kind of get in the groove of the piece. So um, I like to just kind of stay with it for the rhythm of it and then put it away. So Judy, I hope that answers the question. And then Lise, I think, I think it's pronounced Lise, L-I-S-E. Um, Lise asked me about Fabric of the Month Clubs and where to find them. <laughs> and that's a great question. Um, a lot of them that I found are just word of mouth, which I know is not super helpful. Um, I am a member of the Color and Cotton Fabric of the Month Club and also their Thread Club. And so a lot of these, it just depends on the company, but a lot of them you can decide how many you want. So I do monthly, um, but some you can do every other month if you want to. And you, I think in almost all of them, you get to choose what size fabric you want and how big of a piece you want. Um, so the co color and cotton, they are closed for now, but there is a waiting list. I'll put the link down below. Um, and you can sign up for the waiting list. They closed it down because of supply issues just with COVID and whatnot. Um, so I'm doing that one and I will continue doing it next year as well. I will be dropping the thread club, um, after this year, not for any bad reason. It's just, I, I end up buying the called for threads for the most part anyway. So I'd rather have that money go towards another fabric club, which I'm going to tell you about now. Um, hanging thread. So my friend Andrea for, said this to me, and this is how I found out about it. Is she just told me about it. Hanging thread is doing a fabric of the month club for 2021. They are still taking um, signups. And I talked to them on the phone this week and they still have spots available. So I'll be sure to put the link down below. I signed up for what's called the Baker's Dozen, uh, which is 13 pieces. Again, you get your choice of cut, like size of fabric, cut, I think I did a quarter yard, um, I think. And then I did 32 count Lugana because that's my favorite. And I think everybody gets the same piece. I don't think there's a choice of, say, neutrals or colors. Most of them, they do have a preview on the page. So you can take a look and, at those colors. Most of them seem pretty neutral. There are some in there that I think will challenge me, which I think is great. I think I need that because I definitely uh, shy away from bright, bold colors in a lot of ways, especially for fabric. Um, so I'm excited for that. So I will link that down below. And there's a form that you can fill out. And there's a place in that form that you can tell them that you heard about it through me if you want to. Um, if you do decide to, to sign up, I think it's it's right on par with all the other fabric clubs, about $20, $25 a month uh, with shipping, something like that. But I did talk to them. Uh, they called to confirm kind of my order, which was great because they had um, transposed my phone number or something like that or my email or something. Uh, or I wrote it in wrong, which is very possible. Um, so I appreciate that they call all their club members to kind of confirm their information. So that is still open. They are still accepting members. Um, so check that out. Um, and I'll leave the link down below. So Lise, I hope that helped answer that question. There are lots of other fabric clubs. Um, Annie's, uh, Crazy Annie's I know is doing one with color and cotton, which are different fabrics than the color and cotton one. Um, but that one I think is full. Um, yeah, if anybody knows of any other 
Fabric of the Month Club. I know Bestitch Me has one. I don't know the status of if it's full or not. Um, but if you know of a Fabric of the Month Club, leave it in the comments below. And least you can look through the comments and maybe um, find a new one for you. Okay, so I hope that helped. Then next I wanted to talk a little bit about other floss tubers that I've been watching. I haven't done this in a while. Um, and there's lots of really great... Um, floss tubers out there that I've been enjoying and watching. Um, so first up, and I think I've mentioned them before, but Stitch and Stuff, which is Kim and Sarah, they're a mother-daughter team. I've been watching them. They are fantastic. Um, and Sarah has three girls who are also very crafty, and they share their works on floss tube as, a, as well. So it's really fun to see them, and I love their mother-daughter dynamic. They're just so much fun, and they're so, so very sweet. Uh, so I'll leave these all linked down below, but their channel is Stitch and Stuff. So they stitch, but they also uh, show a lot of knitting as well. So that's fun. Mandy Parker, um, her channel name is just called Mandy Parker. Mandy, I have been watching, she uploads usually Fridays or Saturdays, and she is working on a really big haid. Um, it's of an eagle and an American flag, and she's going to finish this Finish it this year. No pressure, Mandy. <laughs> um, so if you want to see her finish this giant, beautiful haid, I would go subscribe to her. Um, because she, she works on it every week. She shows her progress every week. And I think she's down to three or four pages left of this haid. Um, she does other projects as well. She's a very active member of our uh, magazine monthly cross-stitch challenge. So it's always fun to see her in there. Uh, but do check out Mandy. I've also been watching Shelly from Oh My Ada. So Shelly is also in our group. Um, so she does she shares a lot of stitching, but she also does a lot of quilting as well. And she's so talented at quilting. Um, and in our magazine monthly challenge, Shelly very kindly... Um, does a giveaway every month for one of her bags that she makes. Uh, she recently started making bags and they are so beautiful and she gives one away every single month in our magazine monthly challenge. So Shelly, her, her channel name is Oh My Ada, but she stitches on other things besides Ada as well. I thought that was a really creative name. Um, and then Janae Combs, her channel is just Janae Combs. Janae is a beautiful, beautiful stitcher. Uh, she recently showed her suffrage act that she's working on, and it's just gorgeous. And Renee, or, sorry, Renee, Janae is not only a stitcher, uh, she also is in grad school, has a floss tube channel, and I think she works too. I don't know how she does it all. Um, she's amazing. So go check her out as well. So I'll leave all those linked down below, and you can check out their channels. Okay, let's get into cross-stitching. I have an FFO. Can you even believe it? There's hot glue all over it, but I have it. Can you believe that I have an FFO? Can you guess which one it is? It is Witchy Kitty. So here it is. I loved it. I followed the flat ornament tutorial from um, Stitching with the Housewives on how to do this. So I went a little overboard because I wasn't quite sure what I was doing. <laughs> so this, so I just used sticky board and I did do, use a piece of batting on this. This is just purple fabric. I think I showed this, this is the star fabric that I showed that I got from Amazon. Um, and then I realized I had to have a backing. I probably didn't because I just put this on an easel. So it's probably fine if I didn't have a backing but I wanted a backing, so I used a, like all my <laughs> all my sticky board I bought, so I just placed an order for more. Um, so I went a little overboard. It probably would have been fine if I'd stopped at the purple. <laughs> but, you know, I learned a lot. Um, my corners are fine. They aren't great, and they're pretty thick, so I have some work to do on figuring that out. This is... I think this is just called Pumpkin. They're pom-poms. I got them from Lindy Stitches. They're from Lady Face Creates. Lady Dot Creates. I'm sorry. I should have written that down. I didn't write it down. 
Um, I do wish I had pulled, this was the first one I did. I don't know why I started with my stitched piece. Uh, I wish I would have pulled it a little tauter uh, like I did on these other ones. But for the first go around, I'm pretty pleased with it. And then I ordered these little bats just off of Amazon. They came in a pack of like 60 for $4 or something. They were very inexpensive. And I thought it just added a little bit 3D dimension. Uh, but it also goes along with the bats in here. And it kind of filled out, you know, there's no star up here. And I was looking, I was like, it looks a little unfinished yet. But I really like the addition of the bats. And now I have like 58 more bats. I thought they were going to be, you know, those plastic Halloween bats. Um, so they were quite different from what I expected, but I like them. They're just like a, they are plastic, but I was thinking more like the 3D bats. So they lie flat, so they're easy to store. And I just bought this easel. This is a big easel off of Amazon. And it's just a plastic one. It It's designed to look like wood, but it's plastic. And it just sits on my buffet like this and it's super cute and I have an FFO and I love it um, and I figure if the bats now I attach these bats the bats came with just little foam sticker things and I thought they're for sure not gonna stay on right that's silly um, but they've stayed on really well and they're attached to fabric so I'm really happy with it um, and if if the bats fall off or get ruined, I have 58 more to choose from, so I'm not that worried about it. But, so this is my FFO. I'm really, really happy with that. Oh gosh, I have to put this, I'm running out of space. Okay, now, I have another finish. I do, I do, I have another finish. This is Holly Angel. She is done. She did not even get ironed, but she's done. Um, she has fuzzy stuff, which I do need to fuzz up, which I'll do before I send it off. Um, but there is fuzzy stuff kind of in her trim here and around her collar and around her hands. There's fuzzy stuff, which I didn't think was that bad to work with. I just used shorter lengths and a really big needle, um, and it wasn't bad to work with. And then there's beads in here on the trees. This is not the called for. I didn't have the called for. I think maybe it was out of stock or something and I just never got it. But I had some silver beads that called for a white pearl, which I did not have. I just used these pretty silver beads and they look good. And then there's some gold beads in the pots. And then there's three little, the those berries are beads. This is on 14 count Ada in light blue. This was a Jolly July start, and um, it's by Lisa Leanne Designs, and this is in Christmas, Just Cross Stitch Christmas Ornaments 2018. This is what she's supposed to look like. So she's supposed to have a halo and holly wings. I was going to put the wings on, um, but I didn't. I did put the halo in. I did not like how the halo looked, so I took it out, and then I kind of thought, she looks really cute just like this. Um so, I, I mean, I could see where wings would fit really nicely here, but if you don't know that they're supposed to be there, I think it's fine. There's also a little bit of Krynik in here. Um, the star and the tree is Krynik. Um, and then there's some Krynik in the candle, which I don't know if you can see. But, so this will be a gift this year, so I need to FFO it, and then I can give it. I did realize after I finished it that the person I'm giving it to, her hair is brown, not blonde, but... I was choosing called for and I wasn't even thinking of that. So I'm half tempted, tempted to pull out the blonde hair, but that means I have to pull out all of the back stitching. And I don't really want to do that. So I probably won't. <laughs> but so this is done. And this one took me 22 hours total to finish. I, you know, you, we think of ornaments as taking, as being really quick stitches. And this one took me much, much longer than I expected. Um, it's just, it's, it's, I love, love how it looks but it's pretty fiddly um it there's just there's more stitching like that dress was a lot of stitching and there's a lot of kind of special extras you know with the chronic and the beads and the outlining and back stitching 
And then, I, you know, I had issues with the eyes, but the two individuals who sent me the digital copy of the pattern so I could zoom in on the eyes, that helped tremendously. And it also helped me with um, the bead placements on the trees and stuff as well. So thank you to those two individuals who sent me. So that's how she looks. I'm really happy with it. I think the person who receives it will be happy with it. But I'll show it to you uh, when I FFO it as well to get your final approval, of course. And so that's that. So that's a finish. That was a jolly July start. 22 hours that one took me. Put it on top of our witchy kitty. Okay, so those are finishes. And then whips. So I was working on Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow. This was one of my whip go pieces. This is what prompted um, um, Judy's question, I think, about my 10 hour rotations. So I am working up here in that top banner with the pumpkins. I decided I wanted to leave off the twigs that are coming out of the pumpkin stems there, all these curly cues. It just looks a little too busy to me. And looking at where I am, which I'll show you in just a second here, I don't think it looks like anything's missing without it. Okay. So I am stitching this on 32 count vanilla latte by Be Stitch Me. It's the same thing that all of my hawk run hollows are being stitched on. And last week, I think I had two more hours to do, but I got four more hours in. So I got a total of 12 hours for my Whipco for this month. And this is where I got. So I got the pumpkins done. Um, last time you saw it, I think this pumpkin here was just started. So I finished that pumpkin, put the birdie on there. Um, and finish the other two pumpkins. So what I have left to do is where the corn, corn cob and the leaf and the bird on the corn cob and the little spider that needs to be back stitched yet, that's mirrored on the other side. And then this will be done, the, the top banner. And then I have 12, 12 squares to do. So this, is on my whip board again for this year so we will be coming out again for another 10 hour rotation and in that rotation I hope to finish up this uh, top border. My total goal for this piece by the end of 2021 is to get the top border in four blocks done. So there's the top border here and then I do one two three four which in, look at those houses. There's so much stitching in these. This one is basically full coverage. Look at that. It's basically full coverage. Um, doing four blocks doesn't sound bad until I realize that I have four or five hawk run hollows on the go and my goal on all of them is four blocks. <laughs> it's going to be a big year next year but we'll talk about that in the coming weeks so that's where I'm at so she'll go away for now but she will come back out in November or December whenever they're they whenever she is next called um in the whip go then I worked on my temperature tree this is by stitching mommy and each branch represents a month and each leaf on the branch represents a day and I am tracking the high temperatures for each day and we are over here at this branch, almost done with the year. I am stitching this on a 32 count uh, light blue Lugana, <laughs> I believe. And this is where I'm at. We are definitely in fall. Look, these past six days were all the same temperature range, which was 64 to 66 for the high. So it's funny how, and then except for that color, which I can't remember, that was a little warmer, but like this whole branch, we've been basically in the same two or three degrees. So that's kind of funny to look at. And I'll be pulling this back out tonight um, to work on and get caught up. It doesn't take me long. I work on it on Sundays and it takes me half an hour uh, unless I'm stitching a branch as well. So that's temperature tree. And then I pulled out my other whip goat piece for this month, which was Spring Quakers by uh, Rosewood Manor. So this is what it looks like. And I started up here. 
and I got 10 hours done. Let's see. Yeah. 10 hours. I think I showed this last week. Did I show it last week? No, I don't think I did. Never mind. <laughs> um, I got my 10 hours done. I didn't really do anything over. I'm not sure why. I just wasn't feeling this one this month for some reason. I love how it looks. Uh, so this is how far I got. So this is page one is completed. Um, and I did a little bit onto page two. So this is a big giant motif that goes across. It'll go across two pages. And so I did start. I mean, I think the cutoff is, I don't know where, somewhere like over here. Uh, so I did start onto page two. And I have been struggling with these words and finding the right color. Uh, the called for color is one that she says you will use almost. So this is uh, stitched with Valdani threads, which are wonderful. I love working with them. For back stitching, you use one thread. Um, and then for regular stitching, you use as it comes off the ball, which is three strands. Well, the one that she uses for back stitching the words, she says, you use almost the whole ball of it, so just make sure that you're careful. Well, I'm not super careful. <laughs> this sounds terrible. I mean, I'm not like throwing away whole strands or anything like that, but um, I, I'll stitch until it's no longer comfortable, right? And so, I, but I'm not like super, super, oh, I have to save every last inch of this floss. And I know that about myself, and I'm not going to change. So Robin actually had the really great idea, my friend Robin, Bird's Eye Stitches, you can check out her YouTube channel, um, of just using DMC for the words. And I thought that was a great idea. So I, I did that, and I found a really great color. I started out with, I wrote it down so I could tell you. I'm on last week's notes. It does not help. Um, I started out with 318, which is like a really light purple, and it's a beautiful, beautiful color. I just didn't like how it looked. Um, if you look on here, the words are somewhat pale, right? They're not necessarily, I mean, obviously the words are not front and center of this design. But I didn't like the way they looked, and I couldn't figure out, did I want to do use two strands? Did I want to use one strand? I swear, I stitched this word iris probably five or six times trying to figure out how I wanted to do it. Um, and, you know, it says backstitching, which backstitching typically means, you know, over one box, right? One thread. Well, this is 28 count and I'm doing over two, so it'd be over two. But I, I did freesia that way and I did not like how it looked at all. Um, so then I decided after doing the word iris like six different times in six different ways, I decided I probably just need to change colors. So I took it all out and I changed it to DMC 535, which is like a gray. And I love it. And I think it's perfect. And I think if you stand back, you'll see that there's words there, which before they just kind of look like blobs to me. Um, you can see that there's words, but they don't detract from the beautiful Quakers. I think why I wasn't super feeling this one is just because Part of what makes this so beautiful is all the color changes. There's a lot of color changes. Um, and I just, I don't know. I think last time I worked on it, I loved it. This time I was just kind of like, uh, I don't know. This is on 28 Count Valor by Picture This Plus. So there it is. I got the first page. Out. My goal on this piece is to finish it by the end of 2021. I think I can do it. What I'm going to do, and this is what I mean by the rotations, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plan to plan, uh, work on this, give it 10 hours a month rotation until it gets done or until it gets close to being done. Um, and then make a push to try to finish it sometime next year, just by the end of the year. So that's my goal. So we will see. So because I have that goal, this is not going to go on my whip go board for next year because I already am going to put it in a regular rotation to work on it monthly for 10 hours each month. And then maybe I'll pull it out sometimes for 24 hours of cross stitch or something like that. 
So that's Spring Quakers, and that she's not on my whip go board anymore this year. So we got 20 hours put in her and finished up page one. So that's great. And it would have gone, I would have gotten farther um, if I um, had figured out what I was going to do with the DMC. So that's all kind of calculated in that time. Now, haul. I have a little bit of haul to show you. First up, I got this um, beautiful card from Amy. Amy won a giveaway recently, and she sent me one of these um, Hands Across the Sea sampler cards. Isn't that beautiful? I just think it's so pretty. And it does have a chart on the back. Um, it's a forget-me-not chart. And she wrote a lovely, lovely letter. So, Amy, thank you so much for this. This is so beautiful. I really love it. So Amy sent me that. And then I told you I've been going on those stash unload pages uh, on Facebook. And I picked this up. I, my, my finger just accidentally typed me, please. I think it's so pretty. I have a thing for Noelle. Um, and it's a whole kit. It comes with everything you need. It's a gold collection petite candlelit Noelle, it's called. And it comes with everything you need. And look at that beautiful fabric thread, gold metallic thread, charms, shimmer ribbon, 18 count navy Ada fabric. So I don't know when I'm going to start this. I don't really have plans, um, but maybe next year. But I think it's just so pretty. So I did get that. And then my friend Robin, who I talk about frequently on here, and she's my co-partner in crime for the Magazine Monthly Challenge. She recently finished this chart and she passed it on to me. This is a Mirabilia Christmas Elf Fairy. Hers is absolutely stunning. So go look at her uh, video and see how she did it. She left the wings off, which I think I'm going to do as well. Um, but, oh, hers is just absolutely stunning. So she passed the chart on to me so I can work on this. And... She sent me some whisper fuzzy stuff, which is called for in this chart. She did not like it. She did not like working with whisper at all. Um, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. So she sent it on to me. So thank you, Robin. And then she sent me some cry neck. I think this is called for in the chart. Um, pretty sure. So she sent that along, which was very nice. And then she sent me DMC 3840. I can't remember. Did I ask for this, Robin? Did I ask you if you had this? Sometimes we we'll, we'll, we have this little group and we're like, does anybody have this DMC? I need it for a project. And then, of course, I forget what I need it for. Um, but so Robin sent that. So that's very sweet. So thank you so much, Robin. And, of course, she sent a lovely note along with it. I got my just cross stitch December issue so I will be doing a flip through of this I'll try to do film it maybe right after this um, it's a great issue I love this issue December uh, just cross stitch okay and then I I talked about her last week but I went on and bought a bunch more this week um, this is Sharice Smith from stitchingly along she also posts on the stash unload pages every day but she has an Etsy shop called Stitchingly Along and I will go ahead and link her down below. I love her stuff so much. Um, so I'm not going to show you everything because I did get some gifts. These are great gifts for a stitchy friend for you know Christmas or birthday, stocking stuffers, things like that. What I'm going to show you are gifts for me <laughs> first. So this is a beautiful counting pin. I've never had a counting pin before, so I'm very excited over that glare, but look how fancy it is. It's like a royal staff. I love it. So pretty. So I got that. I got this snowflake. It's a, a thread picker, so when you have to frog, you can pick it out. Could you use a regular needle for that? Absolutely. Um, is your regular needle as pretty as this? Probably not. <laughs> I think it's just beautiful. And then, you know, I, I've talked a little bit about how I need a threader that doesn't break. And so she sells these threaders. 
and she puts little, what, what, where's my face? Can you see that? She puts these little bling on them, which I think is beautiful. So I got one of that, and then for an extra dollar, she'll put a magnet on it, so you can use it as a needle minder. So I think these are like, mine are $6 with the magnet, $5 without, but that's beautiful. And then I got another one, because this one was just so beautiful too, also with a magnet on back, but you don't have to get the magnet if you don't want it. So hopefully these needle threaded will help me. <laughs> so I got those for me. And then I got some for you guys. I got some needle minders. She also sells needle minders. And I think they're so cute. I think I bought a bunch. Yeah, I did. I showed you last week. I bought a bunch for me last week. But so there's a sweet little owl, which I think he's so cute. I love owls. I got this really cool guitar. And they're really light needle minders, which I like a lot. So they're very lightweight, very nice quality. Here's a thimble. Isn't that pretty? And then here's a cute purse. Ooh, can you see the lighting? So there you go. There's a purse. So I'll be giving, I'll give away one of these today. We're going to give away the guitar today. Um, but hold on just a second. So that's what I got from Charisse. So that's everything I got in the mail this week. Okay, giveaways. Giveaways, giveaways, giveaways. So first up, we gave away the birthday tags gift birthday gift tags oh my goodness i can't even use the excuse that it's early in the morning and i haven't had my coffee yet because i've had plenty um but the winner of this was tanya parente so tanya congratulations i do have your address so i will get the sent out and then this one was very popular vintage oh my gosh your comments so the word for this one is vintage and your comments for vintage were hilarious um so many of you said well my birthday is <laughs> coming up and now i'll be vintage um, very, very cute. And actually the winner of this is Lise Hebert. So Lise, who asked about the fabric of the month clubs. So Lise, I do need your address. If you can email me at czookstitch at gmail.com. It's also in the description box below. So congratulations to those winners. And then, so for today, we're going to give away, we have three giveaways. We'll give away this guitar needle minder. It's, um, there's a heart on it. It's just uh, some flowers, maybe. It's really pretty. I don't know if you can see that. But, so if you'd like this guitar needle minder, say something about guitar. Okay. I'm also going to give away this chart, Bobby G Designs. This is uh, Autumn Welcome. I bought this off one of the stash and load pages for you all. Um, it is, what, does it give the 84 stitches high and 70 stitches wide, and it calls for DMC. Um, so if you'd like an opportunity to win this, say welcome. And then I'm gonna give away this kit. This is from our friend Cheryl V, who sent this to me to give away. This is says, Love Makes a House a Home. It's a Janlin kit. has everything you need. Um, the oh, You can't see that, but there's the chart. Uh, it comes with a needle, 14 count, 8 of fabric, 6 strand, 100% cotton floss, graph, needle, and instructions. So if you would like an opportunity to win this whole kit, say something about home. This is really pretty. Look at this bunny. Look at that bunny. He's so cute. Um, this would be great if you know somebody who recently moved or recently got married or if you recently moved or got married. Um, so home. So those will be our giveaways for this week. And then plans. So my plans. Tonight I will be working on the temperature tree and then I will be starting Spring and Hawker and Hollow block number four. Uh, it's today's the 25th. I was supposed to get block number four done this month. That won't happen unless there's a miracle, but it won't happen. And that's okay. I think I said at the beginning of the month, I have so many plans this month. I feel really, really accomplished this month. This has probably been my most productive stitchy month uh, in terms of finishing things anyway. Um, but this is block four. So the sailboat with the kites and all that. There's a lot of stitching in there. Um, 
But I will start on that. If I can get the border, just the outside border done tonight, I'll be happy. That takes so much longer than you think. So I will start on that tonight after I do the leaves on the temperature tree. And then I will be working on that for the next three or four evenings. I On my plans, so this is one of my acrostics for the Magazine Monthly Challenge. Uh, this was going to need to be my T for ghost, which is the acrostic, because this chart is by Tempting Tangles, and it's called Peekaboo. This is in the um, September-October 2011 issue of Just Cross Stitch. However, if you just want this chart, you can go to the Tempting Tangles page, and you can it's a PDF download. You can still get this chart if you just want this one. Um, I've ordered my black linen from Acorns and Threads, which is my LNS. has not come in yet, which is fine. My goal for this month on this one was just three hours, so basically one evening of stitching. And I think I said last week, if it doesn't come in that's in time, that's fine. I know there's production issues, and um, I and I'm not really in a hurry. I have plenty of other things to work on. And if I don't complete my acrostic this month just because of this, I'm okay with that. Um, yes, I could go out and buy another piece of linen from somewhere else, but I don't need to. I have everything I need. It'll come in when it comes in. But I think this is such a sweet piece. I'm probably going to leave the peekaboo words off up there. Um, but do you see how it says boo in that smoke or magical steam? Magical steam, I don't know. Um... Yeah, so I might be starting on that. I'm guessing they haven't called and told me yet that my my linen has come in. So I'm guessing it's not going to be here in time uh, for me to start on that this month. Uh, but that's a, kind of on, on the docket in case and I'm ready to go. If not, I'll just give another evening to spring it, uh, sp spring it Hawk Run Hollow Block 4 because I will need as much time on that as I can, as I can get. Then... The other piece I'm going to work on, because the next time I see you, it'll be Halloween. This is this is my only project bag that is not Garon Toten bags. This is um, from Ever Tote, Caroline McNeil, um, who makes also makes beautiful, beautiful bags. I don't know why I have this piece in this particular bag, and I'll tell you why. Because in this bag is Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. Does this look like Halloween? And I have an empty Garon, like a big, you really need the big bags, the... 12 by 18 inch bags for the Hawk Grin Hollow pieces because there's just so much thread. Um, and I like to stitch on 11 by 11 Q-snaps for those because I can get a whole block can fit in the frame on an 11 by 11 Q-snap. And with all the threads and stuff, it's just a little too tight in there, 12 by 13 inch bags. So I would go up to the 12 by 18 inch bags. But my goal, because it's October and Halloween is coming, um, so at the end of this week, so I'll be working this, on this actually on Halloween. Um, this is, oh, I should show you. Nope. This is my working copy of the pattern, but you want to see the actual pattern. So this is Halloween at Hawker and Hollow. And it's a different layout. I like this layout as well. Um, and I started up here. This was a mania start. Um, yeah, just a mania start. I think I did. I can't remember how much I got done. Not a lot. Not a lot is done on this piece. Again, this is on 32 count vanilla latte by Bestitch Me. And there. <laughs> That's how far I've gotten. So not too much done. So I will... My goal on this one is nine hours. So this one is going to count for the H for the acrostic and ghost. H for Halloween at Hawkins Hollow. Uh, so I'm going to give it nine hours, which is three evenings, just because, you know, it's, um, it's October. So, and this is on my, uh, you will probably be seeing this in November and or December. This is Still on my whip go board two times, um, and it hasn't been called yet. So I was hoping it would get called this summer or this summer this month, uh, so that I could, you know, 
kind of double dip, but that's fine. It'll get some progress, so maybe I'll get this block done this, this year. My goal on this one is four blocks by the end of next year. So anything I can do this year to get closer to that goal is going to help me in the long run. Um, so that is my, those are my plans for this week. And I think, let me just check my notes. I think that's everything I have for you this week. So I plan to, work will be calming down. I've had to work the past two Saturdays, um, but that should hopefully be done now. So, and I'm not that, I mean, it's a lot. It makes for a long week, but I'm also not that sad about it because I really am enjoying my new job so very much. And um, it's just, it's great. So I really don't mind. And overall, it's much less stress than, um, I also enjoyed my previous job, don't get me wrong, but it was very, very stressful. Um, and this job is much less stress, um, uh, even with the promotion that came along with it. And yeah, so it's great. I don't really mind working on Saturdays, but that should be over for now. So we should be back on track next Saturday. And I hope you have a great week. Um, I know our friends in the Southern Hemisphere are Hope you have a great spring week and that things are warming up for you down there. And if you're in the northern hemisphere, um, I hope you stay warm and cozy. Make sure you go out and vote. It's very important that you have a voting plan. If you haven't already, please go vote. It's very, very important. And I will see you next Saturday. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.